Elhamdülillah, elhamdülillah, elhamdülillah. Estağfirullah, estağfirullah, estağfirullah. El azim, el ezzeli, la ilahe illahu, el hayyul kayyum. Ve etim ileyh, ve selevü tevbete, ve mağfirete, ve hidayete. İnna ve tavvabu rahim. Ve afu anna ya kerim, o afu anna ya kerim. O afu anna ya kerim, ve affil lana bi faydike ya rahman ya rahim. Ya Melik, Ya Kudus, Ya Hafız, Ya Allah. El evveli Allah, El ahire Allah, El zahire Allah, El batine Allah. Hayrihi ve şerrihi min Allahu Teala. Ve eşhedü enne ilahe illallah. Ve eşhedü enne Muhammeden abduhu ve resuluhu. Esselatu vesselamu aleyke ya Resulallah. Esselatu vesselamu aleyke ya Habiballah. Esselatu vesselamu aleyke ya Seyyidine levinine ve lahibin. İşkelene ya şefiyel müznibin. Bir rahmetike ya Atamar Rahimin. Kâle Allahu Teala fî kitâb-ı kerîm. Eûzu billâhi mineşşeytânirracîm. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. İnnâ khalaknel insâne min nutfetin emşâcin nebtelihi ve cealnâhu semiyen basiren inna hedeynâhu s-sebîle inna şâkiran ve inna kâfirun Allah-u Teala says in the book We created men from a drop of mingled sperm in order to try him so we gave him the gift of hearing and sight we showed him the way whether he be grateful or ungrateful, rest on his will. The first words of Allah Ta'ala that we received from the blessed lips of Rasulullah is a reminder <coughs> more than anything else when he said, Ismi Rabbi Kallazi Khalaq Khalaq al insan al The first thing Allah Ta'ala told us, the first thing, the first knowledge He gave us, we have nothing but a black blood. Why is such a strong reminder? Why our Creator decided to start this? Communication with us with a reminder. Because Allah Ta'ala knows that as soon as we become His supreme creation, Allah Ta'ala knows that as soon as He made us His supreme creation, we are going to forget where we came from. We are going to make, start making claims. Allah Ta'ala knows that in a state of heedlessness, we will see ourselves superior to other creation. When we were born, we were nude. He dressed us. We were hungry. He fed us. We were not able to see. He provided us eyes to see, ears to hear, intelligence. <coughs> to be able to tell the right from wrong, to be able to contemplate all these gifts as, is, as they are stated in the verse. All these gifts are given to us when we were a black club to be able to become a supreme creation so that we can witness his divinity. <clears throat> How could a black club can get an education, become an engineer, become a doctor, how could he reflect upon the creation? How could he worship? How could he devote? How is it possible? It is not possible without his grace and mercy. Regardless, regardless, often, rather than to be thankful, we boast. We boast about education, our education. We boast about our religious devotions, our ancestry, our 
physical strength, our attractiveness. We boast about our achievements. As if it was possible for the blood class to be able to acquire all these things without any help, without the opportunities provided by him, gracefully, generously, we boast. And we, in this state of self-regard, we think that we deserve all these things that are given to us. We deserve, we are entitled, we are entitled to have a family, we are entitled to become a doctor or an engineer, we are entitled to all these achievements that we have. Not only that, we deserve more. In that self-regard, we forget. We forget in all these qualities, since the beginning of life, all the things that are, these are gifts of Allah Ta'ala given to us. If we forget that these were the gifts, how is it possible to appreciate? How is it possible to appreciate Allah Ta'ala? How is it possible to be grateful for the blessing that surround us? How is it possible to be thankful? When you think, when you think, you deserve, and you deserve more than this. To be able to appreciate, you have to go back and remember, you were a blood clot. If one, the truth is, the truth is, only Allah Ta'ala is worthy of all the beautiful qualities that we think we are. There isn't anything, any creation at all other than Him is worthy of these beautiful attributes. If one denies that all power, all grace and beauty belongs to Allah Ta'ala, and if one thinks that we have the right to be above other creation, if one thinks that we are superior, then we are not doing anything different than Shaitan Alayim, who thought himself superior to God, Adam. If one denies that we are better than others, that is a guilt. That person is a is, is guilty of pride. It is arrogance. And it's a disgraceful state in Islam. It is one of the most disgraceful states of Islam. And it is so serious that Rasulullah said that if anyone has an atom's worth of pride in his heart, he or she will not enter paradise. It is so serious that you know, looking around yourself and thinking that you are worthy and others are not, it is the gravest guilt one could ever commit. Beyazetul Bestami, Kudus Serai says, as long as you think that among people that are worse than you, he says you are arrogant. Humility, humbleness, on the other hand, is the true character of a Muslim. Humility, humbleness, it was the character of Rasulullah When he was the most powerful and arrogant, he was the most humble man ever created. Humbleness is to consider not worthy when we were showered with all these be beautiful attributes, when you were showered with physical strength, positions, positions, not feeling worthy, only then you can start, after, start appreciating things. And all the creation was created for the sake of him, and he was praying whole night until morning, until his feet was swollen, and when his wife, Azit Ashe, asked, would say that, should I not be thankful? Should I not be thankful? <coughs> we be thankful unless we feel that we are not worthy. That is the state of the person who is humble. And, humble. and the true humility is really when you are with the less fortunate to think that you don't have really have anything more than them. 
and true humility is really when you are with more fortunate things that you have as much as they have. Even our religious devotions, it will not have possible without His grace. Even our <coughs> devotions would not have been possible without His permission. There was one man who was proud of his religious devotions, that he did not miss any of his, of his obligations for 30 years. And one day, he had this toothache. And when he had the toothache, it was really not easy to do his prayers, to do his obligations. And, and while he was suffering with his toothache, he had a vision. And in this vision, Angel Gabriel approached to him and he said, I can touch you. I can touch your teeth. I can take this pain away from you. The only thing that I want is, in return, I want you to give your devotions to me. Devotions of 30 years. He said that, how could it be possible? These are the fruits of my efforts. I have been striving, putting efforts. This is, these are my devotions. How could I give up my devotions? <coughs> and then the next day, the pain doubled. He had the same vision, and the angel Gabriel approached him and offered the same. He said that, this, I'm not going to give away my devotions just for a toothache. Third day, the pain quadrupled. It came to a point that he could not even think. He could not even keep the time. It was not possible for him, because of the pain, to do any devotions at all, do any obligations at all. And then he had another vision, and he gave me said, Look, with this pain, you cannot even prostrate. With this pain, you cannot even pain. Let me take it away from you. In return, give me your devotions and you can go back to your normal life. Maybe you can make up what you have given up. And the man said, okay, I cannot uh, uh, handle this pain, I cannot survive with this pain. I'm giving up everything that I, that I, that I gathered, accumulated. And then she'll give real call on that. I was sent to give delivery your message. Allah Ta'ala does not need your devotions. I have sent to give you the message that without Allah Ta'ala's mercy, none of your devotions would have been impossible. Just to be, that I, I'm here to teach you to be thankful for every obligation that you were able to perform, because it is with His permission, with His grace. <coughs> It is not easy. It is not easy when you look around that showing the humility, true humility, and thinking that you are not worthy of the of the things that you are blessed with is not easy. We have to watch ourselves. We have to watch every action when we are tested and ask ourselves. For example, do you like to do you like to, uh, do you feel, do you feel the need to be recognized by others? If you do, it's a dangerous place. Do you, are you pleased when people will compliment you? Are you pleased when you are respected by others? Do you feel important and pleased when people admire you? Did you ever refuse to visit someone thinking that he is, uh, he is not your class and it's going to be a waste of time? You're not going to get any benefit from, from this person because he's not, uh, uh, had, he doesn't have the high, highest uh, uh, class that you have. Did you ever refuse to, to sit down, to talk, to interact with someone thinking that you are better than him? Did you find yourself discussing and debating <coughs> against what seems to be truth just to be able to uh, make uh, other people think that you are knowledgeable? Do you find yourself unnecessarily discussing and debating with 
without serving any purpose, without have the need to learn the truth. Do you get offended easily <clears throat> when someone, and in particular when someone points you a mistake, your mistake, do you get offended easily? If you say yes to one of these, there's a problem. You have to really look into your heart sincerely and try to cleanse your heart of any leftover indications of of pride and arrogance. The reason why, why being arrogant, the reason why pride is so, so difficult at the same time, why Allah Ta'ala is so harsh on this quality is that when you are arrogant, when you have the pride in your heart, that emotion enters between you and the other creation of Allah. If you are arrogant, if you have the pride, because you think that you are better, you will never ask what you love for yourself or others. Because your pride, your arrogance requires that. You will always be at the top of others. You will not help people, but you will abase them. You will you will not give good advice, you will never be able to bring them in a state that they will be equal. Because the idea of Africa, you always want to be superior, higher than anybody else. Which is, if you feel that way, if you don't have the power in your heart to ask what you love for yourself, for your beloved brothers and sisters, then it is not possible to complete your faith. And if you cannot complete your faith, you cannot enter the paradise. That's why Rasulullah is underlining. That's why there are very, very strong verses and warnings in the Quran that against pride. Because pride is going to prevent us to perfect our faith. Because pride is going to end between us and the other creation and we are going to push the other creation to be able to receive benefits for our own sake. Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, <laughs> all the most merciful, most compassionate one who would love to forgive all your sins. Amen. Help us to cleanse our hearts and qualities. Help us to get rid of arrogance, hypocrisy, vengeance, anger. Help us in particular to get rid of arrogance, which is the mother of all the other evil qualities, with which anger will come, with which anger will come, with which hypocrisy will come. Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, when you showered us with your blessings, with your bounties, and when you see us ungrateful, please do not stop showering us. When you see us impatient against little trials, little difficulties, please do not increase your trials upon us. <coughs> and decorate us with the beautiful attributes of the one whom you have created as the mercy upon the universe, as the intercessors, intercessors of the sinners like us, and make us worthy of the sinners. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Allahumma sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad al-Mahdi al-Mala'wan, 
جميل بيا أيها المرسلين ملا بيا أيها الصالحين وعلى ملائكتك والمقربين وعلى إطاعتك أجمعين من أهل السماوات وأهل الأرضين ورضوان الله تعالى على آل رسول الله وصحبه أجمعين آمين آمين والحمد لله